Welcome to Learning with the Cleveland Orchestra. My name is Rose Breckenridge and I'm lecturing for the Cleveland Orchestra series Music in Depth. Today we're looking at Poulenc and his organ concerto. I'll be telling you about Poulenc's life and his musical style and also I'll give you background for the organ concerto and a musical tour. So Poulenc lived from 1899 to 1963. He was born in Paris to a quite prosperous family. His father, the director of a pharmaceutical manufacturing uh, company, insisted on a rigorous general education for his son. His mother was from a Parisian family of artistic craftsmen, and she was the one who was the first piano teacher for her son. At a young age, Poulenc fell in love with the music of Schubert, Debussy, and Stravinsky. As a teenager, he decided he wanted to be a composer, and he began piano studies with Ricardo Vignes, but he was not allowed to enroll in a music conservatory due to his father's insistence that he finish a traditional education. At age 16, sadly, Poulenc's mother died. She had been his main support for his musical ambitions. Then, within two years, his father also died, leaving Poulenc an orphan. But his father did give Poulenc a substantial fortune uh, that greatly relieved Poulenc's uh, financial concerns. His piano teacher, Ricardo Vignes, stepped in and became uh, the young man's spiritual mentor, shepherding him through a most difficult period. In 1918, Poulenc was called up for military service, and after his release, when he went to, back to Paris, he gravitated to a group of five other young composers called Les Six, the six. They were united in their admiration for Eric Satie and Jean Cocteau, and also united in their rebellion against the mystical romanticism of César Franck and the overly refined, in their view, impressionism of Claude Debussy. Poulenc was quite successful as a young man in the Paris of the 1920s. He achieved international success with his ballet score, Les Biches, quite a racy title, commissioned in 1923 by Sergei Diaghilev, the Russian emigre impresario. Poulenc loved jazzy cabaret music and managed to marry it successfully to the French tradition of tonal clarity and elegant form. His early works were marked by much irreverent humor and anti-sentimental wit. But Poulenc's carefree persona hid his inner, darker struggles. In the late 1920s, recurrent bouts with depression began as he started to confront issues regarding his sexuality. He even withdrew from composing for a time, but the sudden death in 1930 of his close friend Ramon de Lanossier, well, that brought him back, and he composed a moving song in her memory that foreshadowed a new seriousness that would emerge in his composing. The turning point came in 1936 with the death of his fellow composer, Pierre Octave Ferro, in a terrible car accident where Ferro was actually decapitated. Poulenc was so distressed about Ferro's death that he made a pilgrimage to the shrine of the Black Madonna, La Vierge Noire, at Roca de Mour in the Rocky Mountains of southwestern France. And it was there in Roca de Mour that Poulenc had a spiritual experience that awakened the religious faith of his childhood. From this point forward, in addition to the lighthearted works that had launched his career, he began to compose more serious religious works. The first of these was actually written while he was still at Roca de Mour, Litanies à la Vierge Noire was soon followed by a mass, Mass in G, in 1937, 
and then his four motets for Lent in 1939. Now the war years, World War II years, were quite troubled in France uh, with the Nazi occupation. Um, but after the war, Poulenc moved on uh, to compose some major religious choral works in the 1950s on liturgical texts, notably his Stabat Mater and his Gloria. But his religious opera, The Dialogues of the Carmelites, which premiered in Milan in 1957, this is especially noteworthy uh, in its compelling story of Carmelite nuns and their struggles with faith and fear as they face the guillotine during the bloody French Revolution. Sadly, in 1963, Poulenc died quite suddenly in his Paris apartment of a heart attack just a few weeks after his 64th birthday. His simple church funeral included some of his favorite organ works by Johann Sebastian Bach. So what about his music? Well, Poulenc's music is mainly tonal and quite lyrical in style. Uh, his compositions reveal his mastery and ability to create beautiful melodies and expressive color changes. He composed many orchestral works, including concertos, ballets, incidental music for plays and films. He wrote over 140 songs, three operas, in addition to the choral settings of religious liturgical texts that I've mentioned. And as an accomplished pianist, he also wrote many small works for the piano. To understand Poulenc's music, it's important to understand his personality. As we've seen, uh, he really had two quite different sides. He was often worldly and racy in his outer life, but in his inner life, he became thoughtful and devout. When Poulenc began to compose religious works in 1936, it was because he was attracted to the strength of spiritual faith to help calm his fears and anxieties uh, regarding the fragility of life. And so his compositions came to include both the profane or secular and the religious. So with Poulenc, who he was in his life is what he became in his music. His friend Claude Rostin, who wrote a brief memoir of Poulenc after the composer died, summed up his friend's personality with this famous remark, and I quote, in Poulenc, there is something of the monk and something of the rascal. Rostin went on to explain that although Poulenc loved to be regarded by others as being light, charming, frivolous, and flip, on the inside, he struggled with much anxiety and fear. Rostin concluded that behind Poulenc's, again I quote, easy and ironic cutting up was hidden much inner turmoil. So what about the concerto for organ strings and timpani in G minor? Poulenc completed this work in 1938. It was commissioned by the famous Parisian arts patron, Winaretta Singer, who lived from 1865 to 1943. Winaretta was known for her love of music and she had inherited a personal fortune from her father, who was, of course, the owner of the Singer Sewing Machine Company. In 1893, she married the much older and also music-loving French aristocrat, Prince Edmond de Polignac. He lived from 1834 to 1901. So Winaretta became, by marriage, a princess, the Princess of Polignac. Her Paris mansion was well known as a music salon where composers and artists could gather and also receive commissions. Poulenc said that he considered his organ concerto to be sacred rather than secular, even though not speaking, uh, shall we say strictly speaking, it was not religious. But he did admit that 
concerto stands on the fringe of my religious music, to use his words. Poulenc's organ concerto is very freely uh, constructed in a fantasy form that's similar to Johann Sebastian's uh, Bach organ fantasia in G minor, one of Poulenc's favorite works. The opening of Poulenc's concerto uh, and also the closing uh, recall, if you will, high Baroque drama featuring the organ and the slower sections uh, that alternate with faster sections, the slower sections in the center of the work create moments of quiet meditation. But the rascal in Poulin creates a carnival-like atmosphere in the faster, more lighthearted uh, sections. Plus, the racing strings and at times pounding timpani could seem perhaps irreverent. So the work itself was actually first performed at the Salle uh, Gavo in Paris in June of 1939. The famous organist, Maurice Durfle, uh, was the soloist in the premiere. When Poulenc was uh, composing the work, he actually consulted Durfle about the organ registrations, which determined the various tone colors uh, that we hear from the organ. Now the parts of the piece, again, a fantasy form, are arranged in an arch that begin and end, as I mentioned, with magnificent Baroque organ. And then in between, we have fast and slow sections alternating uh, to create quite contrasting moods. So let's get started with our musical tour. The opening introduction on Dante puts the solo organ on magnificent Baroque display. Dynamics drop soft organ supported by timpani continues later on in this section uh, the strings lead uh, with some timpani support uh, to create a kind of quiet him. Now, this uh, next section, Allegro Giacoso, Fast and Jolly, is going to burst brilliantly on the scene uh, with racing strings followed by virtuosic organ to create a playful, carnival-like mood. Skating scales. There they are again. More uh, organ figurations with string echoes of a slightly different uh, uh, quality are going to show up in just a moment. Let's hear a little bit uh, from that. Thank you. 
very exciting section. Our third section will revert suddenly, I might add, to a more moderate, slow tempo. Uh, and this part is very delicately scored. It opens with a wistful and prayerful organ. Now eventually the strings will join in and uh, when they do, they bring us a really beautiful soothing sound. organ imitates there. Uh, all of the sections from this work are basically about two to three minutes, except for this third section, which is almost seven minutes, uh, giving us lots of time to ruminate and meditate uh, and uh, have contrasting material. Uh, after the opening prayerful, wistful organ, and then the soothing sound of the uh, strings and the dialogue between them, a gentle dance is going to develop with a kind of an uneven skipping rhythm, but not loud and in your face, but as I said, uh, very understated and gentle. supplies that steady undercurrent of chords. Now the following section is going to revert back to a faster tempo marked molto agitato and what Poulenc does uh, towards the end of this suddenly uh, slow section uh, is he provides a transition and the organ jumps in fortissimo, very, very loud uh, with a strong moving bass line beneath uh, to provide a quite uh, exciting transition. So let's hear a bit of that. building higher and higher. Wow, now you see why uh, the organ is called the king of all instruments. And we'll also see this uh, in the opening of our fourth section, the agitato, a fast section with new racing carnival-like music. So here we go.
virtuosic organ followed by the string echoes. Now in this uh, section, the organ has a kind of a cadenza or uh, organ solo uh, to give him a chance to show off his skill at all of the different keyboards, including the keyboard for the feet. Uh, and this uh, develops into a very loud uh, dialogue with the timpani, first the organ. the pounding timpani. Wow, uh, this prepares us uh, and brings it all to a great climax for this middle section. Uh, our next section uh, is uh, quite calm, très calm and lent or slow. It's very serene and a quiet organ with pulsing accompaniment will begin. this moment coming up uh, when the strings take over with a beautiful soulful melody. Here it is. solo cello comes in at the end. Now into this serene and quiet music uh, is going to come a growing crescendo uh, with pounding timpani that helps us transition to our next section, which will be Allegro. So let's hear that crescendo. Here comes the timpani. After a dramatic pause, we're going to launch into one of my favorites, personal favorite sections, uh, which uh, returns us to the initial allegro tempo. The organ opens with this wonderfully delightful uh, carnival dance-like theme that is so catchy, uh, it's just unforgettable. Here it is. Oh, it just gets your foot 
tapping, want you to get up and start moving around the room. Uh, that dance with that uh, catchy tune continues for pretty much the whole section, uh, but it will uh, once in a while er erupt, if you will, uh, with <clears throat> some uh, virtuosity on the part of the organ. Virtuosity eruption is coming. dramatic pause uh, reminding us after we heard that wonderful music why we call the organ the king of instruments and now we move to the final section of uh, the work and also of the um, of the last sections of the piece uh, again we're going to return to the tempo of the introduction and the material of the introduction opening with that high dramatic Baroque sound in the organ. Soon followed by this gentle, soft hymn. Actually, the softer, quieter music dominates in this final section. Strings adding wonderful color and solos too. But as the uh, section and the movement comes to a close, uh, we're going to return to Baroque magnificence uh, as the king of of instruments, the organ, again is featured, uh, pulling out literally all the stops. So let's lead up to that. The quiet, gentle music, and then Baroque magnificence. feel like you're in a musical cathedral there at the end. Well, I hope you get a chance to hear the entire work. My name is Rose Breckenridge. <laughs>